Hi, hello, I am Athena Pandian here. In this video, I am going to explain about uh, uh, the radiology equipments. Okay, uh, this is the first session. I am going to talk something about radiology. So, in this particular sessions, that is in the under this playlist, that is radiology equipment playlist, you are going to see so many radiology related topics and radiology related equipment. In that concern, in this radiology, we are going to start the first equipment called X-ray. Okay, so in the radiology, we are going to see the equipment called X-ray today. So X-ray is a vast topic. Okay, so I am going to do this X-ray in the three different part: part one, part two, and part three. In the part one, we are going to see what is the principle of X-ray. Secondly, what is the construction of X-ray? And generally, what are the types of X-ray? So these are the three main important thing I am going to explain you clearly, theoretically. And before that, I am going to give some of the few introduction about X-ray also. Okay. So the part one part of the X-ray. X-ray, of course, we are all well known about. X-ray is invented in the year 1895. Okay. X-ray is invented in the year 1895 by the German physicist. By the German physicist, his name is Rangel. Every biomedical engineer should know about his, this particular three important topic. 1895, the X-ray was invented. Who is invented? One of the German physicists invented. What is his name? Rangel. Okay, so this is the topic we need to concentrate more because after the invention of this X-ray only, the CT, MRI, PET scanner, SPECT scanner, every radiological equipment will come and play in the healthcare. Okay, so this is what I need to give concentrate on this year and this particular man. Okay, then come to the principal part of the X-ray. What is the principle behind an X-ray? Of course, using the electrons only, the X-rays are generated. Okay, using the electrons only, the X-rays are generated. Of course, we are all well known about the flow of electrons are nothing but the current. If you are increasing the speed of the electrons, what are the possible way to increasing the speed of the electron is, the first possible way is increasing the potential difference. Once you increase the potential difference, according to the potential difference increase, the velocity of the electrons is more. So we can increasing the speed of the electrons. So we are increasing the voltage difference, that is potential differences. We can give up to 50 kilovolt. We can able to give up to 50 kilovolt for the generation of the X-ray. Okay, then what are the other possibility to increasing the speed of the electrons? Along with the 50 kilo electron, along with the 50 kilovolt, we are supposed to create a vacuum in the electron generation. See. The electron is moving from cathode to the anode. We are increasing the speed of the electrons by making the potential difference of around 50 kilovolt. We are not satisfied about the speed of the electrons. We need much more increasing of the speed of the electron. So along with the 50 kilo electron, kilovolt, we are creating a vacuum space between cathode and anode. So in the vacuum, the electron speed is five times it is increasing. So the electron speed is much heavier once you are creating the vacuum and creating the 50 kV. So Ranjit decided that he need to create the 50 kV in the high vacuum chamber. So high vacuum chamber, anode and cathode, from the cathode the electrons are generated from in between the cathode and anode, the 50 kV is connected, that is potential difference. Because of the vacuum, crea vacuum created in the chamber, the electron speed is 5 times increases. Through this particular construction, through this particular demonstration, the Ranjan gives the principle of X-ray. Cathode is anode and player is placed in the chamber. Because of the 50 kV and inside the high vacuum chamber, the electrons are start emitting from the cathode. The fast moving cathode is suddenly immediately stopped by the anode that is placed in front of the cathode. 
After the collision of the anode, the electrons are written back. The electrons are emitting some of the small amount of glittering effect. That glittering effects are considered as the radiations. This is the principle behind the X-ray. So definitionally, we can able to say when a fast moving electrons is suddenly stopped by the metal target, it will emitting some of the few amount of radiations. That is called as the X radiations. This is the principle of X ray. Then, what are the components actually required for the generation? I am not talking about the X ray emission. What are the components required to attain the X ray? Cathode, anode, and the highly vacuumed chamber. So, the Ranjan chose a chamber name called Coolidge. The Coolidge, the Coolidge tube is probably look like this. The Ranjan chose the chamber. This is called a Coolidge. This is the first part in the construction required the chamber. In that, Ranjan fixed anode and cathode. Anode and cathode. Okay. And then the anode and cathode is connected in the terminal. The anode and cathode is connected in the terminal. It having a potential difference 50 kilo volt. Maximum of 50 kilo volt. This is the parts required for generating the X-ray. In deeply we are, we are supposed to study about what is the components for the cathode. What are the components we are choosing for the anode. That is the next step. So firstly you understand about who is inventing X-ray, which is the, what is the year in the you know, X-ray is invented and what is the principle behind the X-ray and then construction of the X-ray generation. So till now, I hope you understand. Okay. Once you combine this anode and cathode with the potential difference of 50 kilo volt, during the time, because of high vacuum, when a fast moving electron is emitted from the cathode, it is suddenly stopped with the anode and it is emitting some of the few kind of the radiation. This is called X-ray. This is the principle. I hope you understand. So diagrammatically I am explaining you the principle. Because whatever the job you are going for in radiology. The basic question they are going to ask is what is the principle behind X-ray. So theoretically I explain and diagrammatically I explain you. Okay. From the cathode, electron is coming, it is stopped with the anode. Because of the collision, it will emitting some of the radiation called X-ray. This is the principle. Okay. Then, so in this part one, I hope you can clearly understand about the construction part. Then, what are the types of the X-ray? Types of the X-ray is nothing but a soft X-ray and hard X-ray is that. Particularly, the hard X-ray can be easily observed by your bones. And soft X-rays are not observed clearly by your bones. This is the difference. For the medical purpose, most of them they are used in the hard X-ray to imaging your bones. Because bones having the capability to absorb the radiation. Because of absorbing the radiation, your bones will be clearly viewing in the X-ray film. This is the reason why the hard X-rays are used. Okay, so the two types of X-ray are soft X-ray and hard X-ray. I hope you understand. Uh, this is the type one. That is, this is the session one of our X-ray title. In the tomorrow, we are going to see the in deeply about X-ray. That is the next part of the X-ray. Thank you very much.